Hi friends, welcome to the channel The Nurse. Here we are discussing about nursing research questions and answers. So here uh, we will discuss about a nursing uh, research sampling method and uh, nursing research design types related questions. So it will be a, a dry topic. So before going uh, to the topic, if you are not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. So we will move to the topic. A nursing research questions and answers nursing research mcqs 2023 so before going to topic i will uh, briefly explain about some uh, uh, terms and uh, types so then it, it will be uh, easy to understand so first we will explain about nursing research sampling so sampling technique uh, it is mainly divided into three category one is probability sampling, second is non-probability sampling, third is mixer type. Mixer type means that is uh, uh, both uh, probability and non-probability sampling. So uh, again the probability sampling it is divided into mainly three types. Uh, it is more than the three types but I am explaining the important uh, three types. First one is simple random uh, sampling. Uh, then second one is stratified random sampling. Then third one, third one is cluster sampling. These are the examples of probability sampling. Then uh, second group is non-probability sampling. In that uh, first one is it is subdivided into convenient sampling, quota sampling, purposive sampling. Non-probability sampling, uh, probability sampling again divided into three. Convenience, quota, purposive sampling. Then uh, mixed sampling. Mixed sampling mainly snowball sampling and multi-stage sampling. But this snowball sampling uh, earlier it is uh, called under non-probability sampling. Sampling. So don't confuse. Uh, if it is called don't uh, non-probability sampling, it will be right only. Don't confuse it because I will explain the term. Then you will understand why it is called mixer type. So don't uh, get confused here. So we will explain the terms uh, during the uh, question answer uh, session. Uh, just this is for your uh, awareness only. Uh, sampling is mainly divided, research sampling is mainly divided into three types, probability, non-probability, mixed type. And we have discussed the uh, subcategories of uh, these uh, sampling methods. Then next uh, we will move to the uh, definitions of these terms. So I already told research sampling methods are te uh, the technique used to select a representative group of individuals or elements from a population of po population to study. So uh, sampling, met uh, sampling method means it is a process of selection from a large population to a representative group. So that representative group will represent the total population. So that process is known as sampling. So uh, I told sampling, uh, it is, research sampling is divided mainly into three types. First one is probability sampling. Probability sampling means uh, it is a type of sampling in which each element of a population has a known and equal chance of being selected for the study. Example include probability of sampling methods include uh, that I will tell before that. Probability of probability sampling means each member of the group will get an equal chance. For an example, the group is containing uh, five members. So five members of the group will get equal chance. That is one by fifth probability of the probability is there to select. So that is what equal chance. Each member A will get one by fifth probability. B also will get uh, one by fifth probability of selection. C also will get 1 by 5th probability, of, uh, D also will get, E also will get same chance or equal chance. So that is the definition of probability sampling. So this probability sampling divided into uh, simple random sampling. Simple random sampling means uh, it will select uh, the uh, sam uh, sample from the total population by simply picking the uh, sample. There is no order or, or uh, no criteria, just simply picking the uh, sample from the total population. That is known as simple random uh, sampling. 
randomly picking the uh, sample. So that is a simple random sampling. Then stratified random sampling. It is uh, one step advanced sampling. Stratified random sampling means first they will categorize the total population into different different sta strata. So this uh, then it uh, select the uh, one or two persons from each strata. So that is what stratified random sampling. First it will categorize a with its peculiar features into a specific uh, group. For example, uh, re re red color banana, orange color banana, green color banana, or yellow color banana, like it will categorize that a red color banana, it is called a strata. From that strata, one or two samples will collect. So that is what is a stratified rambl uh, random sampling. Same time, a similar way cluster sampling also there cluster sampling means again it will uh, categorize a cluster a cluster how it will make means it will select a red color uh, banana from red color one red color banana one yellow color banana one blue color banana like each category one one uh, it will select and make a cluster so there, there will be different uh, 5 or 10 clusters according to the uh, group uh, 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 size and then randomly select one cluster in uh, stat, uh, stratified ra random sampling from the uh, strata the, uh, the researcher will select each one one uh, uh, sample from each strata but in the cluster sampling one cluster itself the researcher will select. So that is a difference between stratified and cluster sampling method. Then we will move to non-probability sampling. Non-probability sampling means the chance of uh, being selection is unknown. So that is what uh, non-probability sampling definition, simple definition means the selection chance is uh, unknown. Non-probability sampling is a type of sampling in which the probability of any particular element being selected to a study is unknown. So we will discuss the uh, down probability sample types. Then you can understand. You will understand easily. First one is convenience sampling. Convenience sampling means according to the uh, researcher's convenience, which one is easily available. The researcher select that group as a sample. So that is what convenience sample. The it is it is involves selecting individual who are easily accessible or easily available such as students in a particular class or shoppers at a mall. So these are the easily available group uh, they are select, uh, researcher is selecting. That method is known as convenient sampling. It is a type of non-probability sampling. The next sampling, uh, non-probability sampling is quota sampling. Quota sampling, uh, it involves selecting individuals based on predetermined quota such as certain number of men and women or a certain number of individuals from different different ethnic groups. Quota sampling, uh, that is best ex example is uh, our reservation, uh, 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 this thing. So OBC, uh, and, uh, general category or SC category, ST category selection, that is the example of quota sampling. So OBC, there will be 30 percentage of reservation and the selection will, uh, that OBC candidates have chance of 30 percentage people will select from uh, OBC or uh, 15 percentage from uh, SC and 7 percentage from ST and the rest of the uh, selection from uh, underserved. So these are the examples of quarters uh, sampling. That means uh, it involves selecting individuals based on predetermined quarters. So here the, the size of the quarter from each category it is uh, predetermined already. From that, they will select that num uh, number of people. Then another type of non-probability sampling is purposive sampling. Purposive sampling means uh, it involves selecting individual based on specific purpose or criterion that is such as individuals with particular disease or conditions. So those who are having some particular uh, disease or condition, they will select as a uh, sample. So that is known as purposive sample in that uh, there, there will be particular uh, the condition or disease will be there then only uh, the person will get selected so that is known as purposive sampling these are the examples of non-probability sampling 
and uh, I told you one example that is snowball sampling uh, that is inverse mixed sampling. Uh, mixed sampling means it is a type of sampling that combines both probability and non-probability sampling methods. So uh, examples of mixed sampling includes first one is snowball sampling. Snowball sampling means first uh, the sample the, uh, the researcher will select a small group of sample. From that small group, the uh, individuals in the uh, group will refer other persons. They are known, uh, known to that uh, person. Person will come into come and join into that group. Then gradually that sample size will increases. So that is the process of snowball sampling. First, uh, the sample size will be very small. Uh, according to the researcher's uh, need, then the uh, this uh, sample selected individual will refer other people in into that sample group. Then gradually the sample size will be uh, uh, increases. The uh, so snowball sampling involves selecting individual based on referrals from other participants, starting with a small group of individual, and then expanding the sample through reference that is why it is comes under mixed sampling so if you are feeling uh, non probability sampling is bet, uh, best means you can consider snowball sampling under non probability sampling also then another uh, example of uh, mixed sampling is multi stage sampling multi stage sampling means this involves using a combination of sampling methods such as selecting clusters using a cluster sampling so cluster sampling means it is an example of probability sampling and then selecting individuals from each clusters using simple random sampling. So this uh, like a multi uh, stage sampling it will it may consider as multi level after selecting uh, one stage then again they will uh, uh, re reduces the sample size. So uh, that is the multi stage sampling so it is an example of mixed sampling. Then we will uh, see the research design. Research design types we will see. So research design mainly divided into three categories based on uh, time, method and purpose. The first uh, we will uh, discuss about the research design based on time. So research design based on time that is uh, again uh, divided into uh, two types that is cross-sectional study and longitudinal study. Cross-sectional means uh, uh, it, the study that in a particular time when the researcher is planning to do that particular time uh, what is the situation that uh, study is known as cross-sectional studies. Longitudinal study in the same the uh, study that conducts a period of time a longer period of time that is known as lo longitudinal uh, study. Example of uh, research design that is based uh, divided into based on time. Then based on method, it is divided into mainly three types, uh, two types. That is qualitative research and quantitative research. Based on method, uh, the research design uh, that is divided into two types: qualitative research and quantitative research. Qualitative research, it is again subdivided into three that is phenomenological design, grounded theory, historical research. Then quantitative research, it is divided into two types that is experimental and non-experimental type of research. In that experimental, again divided into true experimental and quasi-experimental. Non-experimental is divided into two that is descriptive type and the correlation type. All the terms we will uh, discuss in the uh, coming uh, question answer time. So each, each term uh, I will uh, explain there. Same time based on the purpose the research design is divided into four types mainly uh, applied research, explorative studies, explanatory studies, action research. So these are the a research design and their subcategories are also explained. So we will go to the uh, question and answers. Then I will explain these terms. The, these terms are coming as an options that that time I will explain. First question: 
which of the following research design is best suited to investigate the casual relationship between an intervention and an outcome? Cross-sectional design, case control design, cohort design, randomized control trial. Correct answer is randomized control trial. It is a type of experimental study. This randomized control trial, it is a uh, research design that is a set subcategory of experimental study. So, we will uh, define what is a randomized control trial here. The best research design to investigate a casual relationship is randomized control study as it allows the researchers to manipulate an intervention and compare it to a control group. So, this is a typical category of research study. It means there will be a control group and experimental group and the researcher will uh, uh, manipulate the uh, experimental group and uh, he will compare. So, randomized control uh, study is a typical research study that is used in clinical trials. Then first option was there that is cross-sectional design. Cross-sectional design, I told you, a cross-sectional design is a type of research design used to collect data in a single point of time. So, that is the difference between cross-sectional study and longitudinal study. Longitudinal study means it is a long-term process. So, period of time, uh, the uh, researcher will uh, observe the uh, details. But cross-sectional time, that particular period of time, so today, so that today what is happening? So, that is what cross-sectional de uh, design. This type of design is often used to study prevalence, patterns and associations among variables. For example, a cross-sectional study might be used to examine the relationship between age and smoking status in a particular population. So, these are the examples. So, you can uh, go through that. Then, case control study. Case control study, it, uh, it is a uh, case uh, research design type of research design used to compare individuals with a particular disease or condition to individuals without the disease and disease or condition so it will give an idea so this type of a design is often used to identify risk factors causes of particular disease or condition for that case control study will help for example a case, case control study might be used to compare the smoking habits of the individuals with lung cancer to individuals without lung cancer. So, it will uh, give an idea about how smoking related to lung cancers. Then, uh, third point was cohort design. Cohort design means it is a type of longitudinal uh, study only, but uh, compared to longitudinal st study, cohort design uh, will have a shorter period. Only a shorter period on, uh, we can mention. But it is also a longer process only. But it is uh, it is uh, deferred to longitudinal by longitudinal study by selecting the sample uh, process. So that I will uh, explain here. Cohort design is a type of type of research design used to follow a group of individual over a period of time. Same like longitudinal study. To study the incidence and patterns of the particular disease or condition. This type of design is often used to identify risk factors or cause, causes of particular disease or conditions. For example, a cohort study might be used to follow a group of individuals who were expo exposed to a particular environmental toxins over a period of years to study the incidence of a particular disease. So, again it is coming uh, in another question, so that time I will explain little more. Randomized control trial, it is we already uh, explained. A randomized control, control trial is a type of research design. It is an example of experimental study used to test the effectiveness of an intervention or treatment by randomly assigning individuals to receive an intervention or a control group. Usually in randomized control trial that is uh, designed to measure uh, in humans only, you, uh, mostly, but uh, 
compared to other studies, uh, randomized control trial, it is used to uh, in the clinical trials. That is what it is mainly used, uh, I told you, it mainly used in humans. This type of design is often considered, considered a gold standard for evaluating the effectiveness of intervention or treatment because it minimizes bias and confounding factors. For example, conf confounding factors I will explain. For example, an RCT might be used to test the effectiveness of a new medication by randomly assigning individuals to receive the medication or a placebo. For an example, uh, our uh, COVID vaccines and uh, uh, we have tested like randomized control trial uh, early. So for randomized control trial, we need to conduct a, a pilot study before that. We need to get approval from uh, uh, higher centers like ethnic centers uh, or like ICMR, like controlling authority will be there. Then only we can do randomized control trial. Second question, a researcher wants to investigate the prevalence of pressure ulcers in a population. Which of the following sampling technique is most appropriate for this study? Convenient sampling, stratified sampling, snowball sampling, simple random sampling. Correct answer here, simple random sampling. So why it is simple random sampling is used here? That we will explain. The most appropriate sampling technique for this study is simple random sampling as it ensures that every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected and reduces the risk of selection bias. That is why in bed sore patients, uh, uh, simple random sa uh, sampling is used there. So the, the, that, is me that means equal chances will be there. Convenient sampling, that is an example of non-probability sampling. Uh, it is a type of non-probability sampling in which individuals are selected based on their convenience or availability. The type of sampling is often used when time or resources are limited and the sample size is small. So, in two conditions, convenience sam sampling will be used. A, uh, uh, one, first one is availability or convenience. Second one is the sample size is uh, small. In these uh, criteria are there means we can use convenient sampling. Example means a researcher might use convenient sampling to recruit participants for a study from a class or workplace. So that is easily accessible. Then stratified sampling I explained it is an example of probability sampling. A type of probability sampling in which a population is divided into subgroups that is strata and individuals are randomly selected from each stratum in proportion to the size of the stratum. So, if large number of uh, people are involved in one stratum, means uh, the researcher will uh, take one or two people. If smaller stratum, it will take one uh, sample from each stratum. Then, uh, third one is snowball sampling. Uh, it is an example of non-probability sampling or we can tell mixed sampling also uh, in which participants are recruited through referrals from each part e from other participants. This type of sampling is often used when the population is difficult to identify or access. So in that condition we can use snowball sampling because the, uh, the researcher doesn't know about the population or particular uh, rare if there is a researcher is going to study a rare illness or a rare disease. The researcher doesn't know about who all are affected. So first uh, the researcher will recruit uh, from his known group. Then these individuals will refer other uh, their friends or their known persons. So that gradually the group will the group size will increases. Simple random sampling uh, I already explained that is we can use in the case of uh, bed sore patients uh, study. So that is means each member will get uh, each uh, equal chances. That is the main uh, criteria for simple random sampling. Then third question, a nurse is conducting a study to investigate the impact of, impact of new pain management protocol on a patient outcome. Which of the following research method is most appropriate for this study? Quantitative research, qualitative research, mixed method research, action research. 
here correct answer is quantitative results quantitative results mainly used to quantify or numerical value is there means uh, we can use quantitative results if we cannot measure uh, the value in a numerical or numbers then uh, that type of experiment experiment will comes under qualitative research quality so here uh, the nurse is using a new pain management protocol on patient uh, that uh, the uh, by using the new pain management protocol on patient outcomes so that will give a numerical data so that is why a quantitative research is using here the most appropriate research method for this study is quantitative research as it allows for the measurement of numerical data and stati statistical analysis to determine the effectiveness of the pain management protocol so that is why quantitative used because there is a the uh, we are assessing the numerical data and the statistical analysis so when there is a numbers comes uh, for a, a, a experiment then we can use a quantitative research then um, when there is a uh, uh, thing that we cannot uh, measure in a numbers or numerical data then it will comes under qualitative research a researcher is conducting a study to investigate the attitude of nursing staff towards the use of electronic health records which of the following research method is most appropriate for this study experimental research observational research survey research case study research correct answer is survey research so here uh, the researcher is investigating attitudes of nursing staff attitudes we cannot measure in uh, numerical data so it is a kind of uh, qualitative research survey research so in that we can measure the attitudes opinions of that particular uh, individual the most appropriate research method for this study is survey research as it allows the researcher to collect data on attitudes and opinions through questionnaires or interviews so through survey we can uh, get the uh, data or attitudes and opinions through questionnaires or interviews that is why survey method survey research method is appropriate there experimental research experimental research i already told uh, there will be a, a numerical va uh, value to uh, res uh, uh, experiment then we can use experimental research experimental research is a type of research in which the researcher manipulate one or more variables to observe the effect on another variable while controlling the extraneous variable this type of research is often used to establish causal relationship between variables so that is what i explained in research uh, rct uh, method so rct rct method is an example of experimental research only this type of research is often used to establish causal relationship between variables for variables for example a researcher might conduct an experiment to test the effect of new drug or blood uh, pressure by randomly assigning part, uh, participants to receive the drug or a placebo experiment uh, experimental research uh, it is divided into two mainly two types that is true experimental research and quasi experimental research true experimental research means there will be a control group and experimental group and there will be a randomization of selection process in that method is known as true experimental research there will uh, there is no randomization in experimental research then it is called quasi experimental research quasi means similar the randomization is not there means the, uh, it is called quasi experimental if there is a randomization is there means uh, that uh, experimental research is known as true experimental research then another uh, option was observational research observational research means it is a type of research in which the researcher observes and records the data or on a phenomenon or behavior without manipulating any variable so observational research means there is no manipulating 
uh, no manipulating the data on independent or dependent variables just observing the behavior and their recording this type of research is often used when an experimental research is not feasible or ethical or when the goal is to be describe or explore a phenomenon for an example a researcher might conduct an observational study to observe the behavior of animal in their natural habitat so the, it is an example of non experimental uh, research study observational research means it is there is no uh, manipulation of variables survey research survey research is a type of research in which the researcher collects data from a sample individuals using a standardized questionnaires or interview this type of research is often used to collect data on attitudes opinions and behavior so it is an example of qual uh, qualitative uh, research Ex for example the researcher might conduct a survey to assess the public's attitude towards a new policy proposal then case study research case study research is a type of research in which researcher researcher investigate a particular case or particular disease or particular illness or situation in depth often using multiple sources of data this type of research is often used when the goal is to gain a deep understanding of a phenomenon or to explore a new theory so if there is a lack of knowledge in particular phenomenon or uh, uh, theory then uh, there uh, we will conduct case study research to get a deeper depth no, uh, depth in depth knowledge so case study research will give a in depth knowledge to researcher fifth question which of the following is an example of a dependent variable in a nursing research study age of participants sex of participants blood pressure readings intervention type correct answer is blood pressure readings dependent variables means it is dependent to uh, other others or it is dependent to independent variables so here blood pressure is a dependent into various things blood pressure may uh, depends on uh, the uh, patient positioning and uh, technique used to measure or uh, time, time of the uh, day or age of the uh, participants etc are uh, uh, influenced in blood pressure readings so so it is called dependent variables but age sex intervention type the, these are not it is a fixed one so it is known as uh, independent variables it will not change the dependent variable is the outcome that the researcher is trying to measure and is affected by the independent variable in this case blood pressure readings are the dependent variable that may be influenced by the intervention type sixth question a uh, this question is from uh, statistics a researcher is investigating the effect of a new patient education program on a self care behaviors of individuals with diabetes which of the following statistical tests is most appropriate for this study chi square test anova test t test correlation coefficient correct answer here t test so i will explain the t test here the most appropriate statistical test for the this study is a t test t test because it is used to compare means between all the terms you uh, thoroughly watch um, it is used to compare means between two groups and determine if the new patient education program has a significant impact on self care behaviors so it is the uh, it is used to measure the uh, it compare the um, difference between means means of two groups t test so another uh, i will explain chi square test then you will get confused that is why i told you to uh, concentrate on each words chi square test also it is a statistical test used to determine whether there is a significant association between two categorical variables previous t test it is used to uh, measure the difference between means of two groups here 
chi-square test, it is used to determine whether there is a significant association, association between two categorical variables. It is used to test the null hypothesis that are that there is no association between the two variables. For example, a researcher might use a chi-square test to determine whether there is a relationship between gender and voting preference. So initially there will not be a, a relation between the two variables. The researcher is trying to find if there is any uh, relation. So the, uh, that is uh, uh, known as chi-square test. Then ANOVA test is another one. Analysis of variance. That is a, a, a full form of ANOVA test. It is a statistical test used to determine whether there is whether there are any significant differences between the means of three. In t-test, uh, the means of two they uh, uh, used in t-test, but ANOVA test it is a uh, used to determine whether there are any significant differences between the means of three or more, three or more groups. It is used to test the null hypothesis that are that there is no significant difference between the means of the groups. For example, the researcher might use an ANOVA test to determine whether there is a difference in the average income between people living in a different regions. So you can go through the uh, terms uh, for deeper understanding. Then correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient is a statistical measure that uh, quantifies the strength and the direction of the linear relationship between two continuous variables. It ranges from minus 1 to po uh, positive 1 with the value of 0 indicating there is no correlation. Uh, a value of positive 1 indicating a perfect positive correlation. Positive 1 indicates that if one variable is increasing the same direction another variable also increases. That is what positive 1 indicates. The value of, of negative 1 indicating a perfect negative correlation. That means if one variable is increasing, the other variable will move into opposite direction. The other variable will decrease. So indirect proportional. That is what negative 1 indicates. Correlation efficient of negative 1 indicates uh, that is opposite, uh, indirect, indirect proportional. Then seventh question, a nurse is conducting a study to investigate the relationship between stress levels and job satisfaction among nurses. Which of the following research design is most appropriate for this study? Longitudinal study, case control study, cross-sectional study, cohort study. Correct answer is cross-sectional study. Um, the most appropriate research design for this study is a cross-sectional study as it allows the researcher to collect data on stress levels and job satisfaction at a single point in time. So that particular time uh, that uh, researcher is assessing uh, the stress level and job satisfaction. That is why cross-sectional study is appropriate there. And next, uh, the other terms, longitudinal uh, study, uh, we already explained longitudinal, uh, longitudinal study is a research design in which data is collected the same participants over an extended period of time that may be for years or even decades. The aim of this study is to observe changes in variables over time and to identify cash and relationship. For an example, a researcher might conduct a longitudinal study to examine the effects of new drug on patient's health outcomes over several years. So longitudinal study means it is just opposite to the cross-section study. It uh, studies a, a particular uh, uh, data over a period of time. That may be for years or even for decades. Cohort study also it is a type of longitudinal study only, but sample selection method is different. Uh, when compared to a longitudinal study. Uh, a cohort study is a type of observational study in which a group of individuals is followed. 
group of individuals that is what cohort means uh, followed over time to assess less the relationship between exposure to a risk factor and the development of a particular outcome the cohort can be defined based on a variety of factors so in longitudinal study the criteria will not be there but in cohort study the sample selection criteria is there based on the age occupation or exposure like criteria will be there or exposure to a particular substance for example a researcher might conduct a cohort study to examine the relationship between smoking and lung cancer by following a group of smokers and non smokers over a period of several years eighth question a researcher is investigating the prevalence of depression among individuals with chronic illness which type of the following data collection method is most appropriate for this study structured interview unstructured interview focus group self administered questionnaire correct answer is self administered questionnaire so why it is using we will discuss here and also we will discuss the other options what is structured interview and unstructured interview and finally focus group self administered uh, questionnaire that is it allows for the efficient collection of a large amounts of data and maintains participant confidentiality so that is you uh, that is why uh, self administered uh, questionnaire used here so we will uh, see a little uh, bit uh, a little more about self administered questionnaire here first we will uh, discuss structured interview structured interview is a research method in which the interviewers ask a predetermined set of questions so there will be a particular uh, number of question and it will be same for all so the answering option also will be uh, given sometimes there so the uh, researcher has a, a specific plan for this interview that is what uh, structured interview the just opposed to the structured interview there will be unstructured interview unstructured interview means it is a research method in which the interviewer ask open ended questions so open ended questions means uh, it will give a broader answer so a descriptive answer will be there and uh, there will not be a time limit so these are the features of unstructured interview the aim of unstructured interview the in, uh, interview is to encourage participant to share their experience and opinions in their own words allowing for in depth exploration of a topic so that is what unstructured interview is used structured interview means it will be a planned specific type of questionnaire and a time limit will be there uh, uh, it is like a controlled manner unstructured interview will explore the uh, mind of the uh, participant then focus group focus group means uh, the researcher will uh, uh, make a group then uh, the researcher will discuss the opinions of that particular uh, uh, group regarding that uh, particular uh, issues then it will like a brainstorming yeah, the focus group is a research method in which a group of individual is brought together to discuss a particular topic or issue the aim of this type of research is to explore the opinions and attitudes or experience of participants in a group setting so focus group will be a controlled group and they will discuss the particular condition or particular uh, issue and it will like a brainwashing uh, brainstorming self administered questionnaire that is the answer of our question self administered questionnaire is a research method in which participants are given a set of questions to complete on uh, on their own without the assistance of an interviewer the questions can be open ended or closed ended or may cover a range of topics the aim of this type of research is to gather information from a large number of participants in a standardized manner for an example researcher might use self administered questionnaire to collect data on individuals attitudes towards a particular social issue by asking a set of predetermined questions that participants can complete on their own time the ninth question nrc is conducting a study to investigate the impact of a new fall prevention program on the incidence of a falls among older adults in a nursing home which of the following study designs is most appropriate for this study 
cohort study, case control study, quasi experimental study, randomized control study, uh, trial. Correct answer is quasi experimental study. Quasi experimental study means uh, that is uh, example of experimental research. Uh, research. So experimental research is divided into true uh, uh, true experimental research and quasi experiment. In the uh, true experimental study, there is there will be a randomization in selection of uh, sample, but quasi experimental study there will not be a randomization. That is the uh, difference between uh, quasi experimental and true experimental study. But uh, here uh, our sample is older adults in a nursing home. So that we cannot change here because we need to apply the new fall prevention program in same sample only that is older adults in a nursing home. But we are changing the independent variable here. A new fall prevention that is earlier there was a pro fall prevention program but here that fall prevention program is modified and made a new fall prevention program. So that is why it is uh, the quasi experimental study is used here. There is a changes in, uh, in uh, independent variable without doing a randomization in sample selection. The most appropriate study design for this study is a quasi experimental. Quasi means similar, similar to true experimental study, but only difference is uh, randomization is not happening here. As the researcher is manipulating the independent variable that is fault prevention program. It, the fault prevention program was there, but researcher is updating that word into a new newer one but he is unable to randomly assign the participant to intervention or control group because the our uh, sample group is the old age persons in a, that particular nursing home that we cannot change but only we are changing the ind independent variable that is uh, for prevention program then 10th question a researcher is conducting a study to investigate the effect of music therapy on an ancient on anxiety levels among hospitalized patients, which of the following is an example of a confounding variable that may impact the results of study. So here one new term is coming that is confounding variable. So you need to find the example of a confounding variable from options. Age of participants, type of music used, gender of participants, time of day the music is play, played. So here correct answer is type of music used. So first I will explain the uh, term confounding variable then you will get the idea. Confounding variable is a variable that is not directly measured in the study but may impact the relationship between the independent variable and dependent variable. The definition of confounding variable, a variable that is not directly measured in a study but may impact the relationship between independent and variable, independent variable and dependent variable. Here the type of music used is a confounding variable, variable as different type of music may have different effects on anxiety levels. So different music uh, will uh, reduce different range of uh, anxiety levels in an individual. That is, for, that is why it is uh, an example of confounding variables. So I, uh, that is about today's uh, questions. So 10 questions we have discussed but we have discussed uh, more terms that is uh, unfamiliar to you. So that is the main objective for this uh, video. Uh, I need to explain some terms to understand uh, related to uh, nursing research mainly that is from nursing research methods and nursing research designs so i think this video will be helpful for you if it is helpful you can share with your friends and don't forget to like this video and uh, those who are not subscribed please subscribe so thank you for watching this video if you have any doubt means you can ask in comment section so thank you 
so we will come with another video soon uh, that is mainly uh, questions from obg so that we can make it tomorrow day after tomorrow so till then bye bye